Well, hello, my fellow Americans and fellow Christians. Thank you for taking time to join me today. My friends, we know Revelation is about the end time, but I'd like to take you to Revelation chapter 10 real quick and verse 8. And this is what it says. And the voice which I heard from heaven spake unto me and said, Go and take the little book which is open in the hand of the angel which stands upon the sea and upon the earth. And I went unto the angel and said unto him, Give me the little book. And he said unto me, Take it, eat it up, and it shall make thy belly bitter, but it shall be in thy mouth sweet as honey. My friends, this is what we have done with Christianity today. These are close to the end time. We are in the beginning of sorrows, the scourges, the world unrest that we are seeing throughout the world are part of the prophecies that Christ himself spoke about in Matthew 24. We also read about these type of delusions that we are witnessing today in the Christian faith St. Paul wrote about concerning Christians in the last day, how they would depart from the faith and no longer have a true identity with Christ, but still claim to have an identity with God, denying the power thereof. Our difficulties today have arisen from a false gospel in this country. We have taken the word of God that has been sweet to us, and we have made it bitter. I want to take you to 2 Corinthians chapter 12 in the beginning and verse 1. And this is the Apostle Paul writing, and this is what he says. It is not expedient for me, doubtless, to glory. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. So he had visions and revelations of the Lord. I knew a man in Christ about 14 years ago, whether in the body I cannot tell or whether out of the body I cannot tell, God knows, such a one caught up to the third heaven. He's speaking of himself being brought up into the third heaven, and it seemed absolutely real to him. And I knew such a man, whether in the body or out, I cannot tell, God knows, how that he was caught up into paradise and heard unspeakable words which it is not lawful for a man to utter. I just want to take one moment to speak about all these people that are sitting there saying that they have gone up into heaven and they have spoken with Christ or they've gone down to hell and spoken with the devil or have seen the purgatory or have seen some other form of angelic power. My friends, the Apostle Paul says it was not lawful for him to speak a word about what he saw. The reason behind it, we do not know. But it is the same principle behind the scripture I just read to you. John was told not to write down in that chapter of Revelation chapter 10, some of the things the seven thunders of heaven uttered. It was to be sealed up and not spoken. And my friends, this is what he says. As such a one will I glory, yet of myself I will not glory. The power of his leaving the earth, going to the third paradise of heaven, revealed to him the majesty and power of God, humbled him. And he says, I will never glory of myself. Of such a one that I saw, I will glory Christ the Lord. And we do not have that today. We do not have men and women in the pulpit today preaching about the glories of God, the power of God, the might of God. 
We do not have them preaching about the anointing of God, the goodness of God, the generosity of God, how he is moving daily in our lives. We have a Christianity today that is making the sweet, wonderful gospel of Christ bitter. We see a man-made gospel that is trampling over the Word of God, rejecting Christ, and men walking after their own political agenda, calling it Christianity. My God, folks, we even have well-known televangelists Evangelicals wrapping themselves in flags, not the cross of Christ. And listen to what he says. Yet of myself I will not glory, but in my infirmities. For though I would desire to glory, I shall not be a fool. For I will say the truth, but I will now... But now I forbear, lest any man should think me above that which he sees me to be, or that he hears of me. And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. He had a problem with arrogance. And a messenger of Satan was given unto him by the Lord to keep him humble. What we are seeing today, the tragedies of mass shootings, the tragedies of weather scourges, the tragedies of broken homes, the tragedies of hyenas murders, of husbands killing their wives and their children, or mothers killing their children, or mothers or husbands poisoning one another. We see this in our society today on a scale we have never seen. And these things are upon us because we have taken the gospel of God and made it bitter. It is not a power in this nation today. It is a destructive force escalating these very things I just talked to you about. Everything is relative in life. And what we are seeing as a catastrophe of destruction is escalating not only here in the United States, but throughout the world. It is because of the rejection of the gospel. It is because of the rejection of Christ, the rejection of morality, the rejection above all of spirituality that which God can give that he can instill into the heart of man, impart his faith, impart his spirit. And his spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, meekness, and faith. And these things are no longer with us. For those who grew up in the 50s and early 60s, we saw the majestic power of a gospel followed properly where families were families, where families went to church and respected one another, and above all, respected and feared God. Men at that time feared to walk into a church, fearing the power of God, fearing walking in a place of worship, that has the revelation of Christ and they're walking in as a sinful, dark individual. 
We no longer have that today. Everything is accepted within the church today. And above all, we see it in our generation and time. They are not preaching to you the gospel of Christ, the salvation of man. What they are preaching to you today is their own gospel that allows you to do whatsoever you will without any moral thought. With no cognizance, with no conscience of what you're doing and saying that no matter what you do, you are accepted of God, which is not true at all. For it says that many in the last days will depart from the faith. You have preachers today saying you'll never depart from the faith. Oh, yes, you will, because it says you will. And the Lord says in the last days, many false prophets will rise and deceive many. We are seeing that today. And we are seeing the spirit of Antichrist within the church. And this is what he says. For this thing I besought the Lord three times that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, I will rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. I'm thankful for the thorn, thorn he is saying, that is humbling me. And keeping me in touch with Christ. The things that are buffeting you. They are meant to humble you. And bring you to Christ. They are meant to warn you. And help you. That Christ may be exalted in your soul. That the sins of the flesh. Such as arrogance may not have a power over you. Therefore I take pleasure in firmness, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake, for when I am weak, then I am strong. But I want to point out to you what he went through as an apostle of Christ real quick. And that is, he said he was reproached. He had infirmities. He had necessities. He had persecutions. He had distresses in his heart for the people of God. Perhaps he couldn't even sleep. How many are like that today concerning the church of the living God? Concerning the reputation of Christ and the honor of God? We do not have them today. My friends, may you earnestly take time to look at what kind of lifestyle you are living in Christ. And perhaps the things that are buffeting against you are sent by the Lord to awaken you to return unto Him that you may have joy and the fruits of the Spirit by the power of Christ in your life. God bless you, and God bless the United States of America.